thing, and we're hoping the weather cooperates. Apple Harvest Festival uh, gets into its. I just heard a honk on the horn. It might be a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's I mean, Courtney. Uh, Courtney, yeah. Uh, but uh, this is a big weekend for Apple Harvest Festival, and in studio, the reigning Queen Pomona, Olivia <laughs> Travis. Queen Pomona, good to see you. Good morning. It's good to be here with you guys. We love the crown. <laughs> Thank you. And we understand you get to keep it. Yes, I do get to keep it, but the sash gets passed down through the years. So that's a special tradition with the Apple Harvest Festival Queens. Oh, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Where so, are you going to put the, the crown? Where do you store yeah. a crown? Where does one store a crown? <laughs> yeah. Probably in my room. I have these like bookshelves built in, so mm -hmm. probably on one of those shelves just displayed right there. <laughs> That's very sparkly. Do you get to wear the crown when you come back to the Apple Harvest Festival at any time, or is it... Is that faux pas? You're not allowed to wear the crown anymore. Yeah, so tonight is the gala at the racetrack, and tonight is when I'll give like my farewell speech, and then tomorrow in the morning we have a ladies' brunch, and tomorrow is when um, the new Queen Brittany will kind of step into the role, so after she steps in, I don't wear the crown anymore. Fantastic. We had the new queen in last week, I think, mm -hmm. and she was marvelous. She's amazing. Yeah. Did you two know each other before the passing of the uh, sash? No, we didn't at all, but we've gotten really close being at the different activities together, mm -hmm. and it's so fun to watch her um, experience everything that I experienced last year, and I just know that the court and Brittany, they're having so much fun together, and I love that they're having a great relationship. Matt Harvey. Olivia, Hi. I, I know this is the first time you and I have ever spoke, but I, we were talk, talking off air about how I just love your grandmother. Yes. Oh, how do you She's know her grandma? Amazing. I was I was assigned to her courtroom when I was a, a baby prosecutor back in two thousand and five. No yeah, I spent four years with Joan Bragg. So that's eighteen years ago. How old are you? Eighteen. <laughs> I remember, and and she she was so proud of her, and she's still proud of you, yes, I'm sure. She is. She's the but best. I also got I was also the judge on Miss Jefferson contest last year. Oh, really? And I was amazed at how much effort and preparation that these young ladies sure. are are for are forced to do if they're going to be successful. So I was going to ask you what kind of skills uh, do you think that you've developed for the rest of your life that's been helpful. Yeah, definitely through organizations like this. I've developed so many skills that will help me be successful in the next steps of my life. Um, interview skills, being able to talk to people like you and go up on stage and talk to big groups. Um, time management is a huge thing. I know I mentioned off air that like going back and forth between um, Morgantown, where I go to college, and coming here has been kind of busy, but I'm super excited to be here, and it's all in time management and being able to know what I need to get done, when I need to do it, being on schedule. So there's definitely a lot of life skills that come out of this. Courtney Funk is with us as well, Vice President of the Mount State Apple Harvest Festival Board. Courtney, good morning to good you. Good morning. How are you? Great. Thanks for coming good. in. Yes. We heard Thank your you. horn honk when you when you pulled in there. We, so we knew you were just seconds away. Yeah. We had, uh, twins. We had a snafu this morning. So. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Thanks I, for your patience. I got you. I got you. I, got, I love your pen. What do you have there? So actually, this was the very first. Um, we have a Queen Pomona's brunch. Mm -hmm. And so this was the very first pen that was provided to us at the very first brunch um oh. yeah so it's it's actually my all-time favorite one too i keep it in the little container that they gave it to us in. And, and there's a different pin every single there's year there's a different pin every year so it's really special to be able to say that i have one from every single year since we've had the event of course minus the covid years um <laughs> it, yes so I, this one is the one i pulled out of my drawer this morning so that's I great love, yeah very nice uh, how long have you been involved with the board oh my goodness so probably coming up on eight years i want to say mm -hmm. yes eight years because my daughter was about one years old mm -hmm. one year old when i was asked to join yes and how did you decide to join this board um so actually i was a maid on the court years ago and um, i just really developed a love for the festival and um, i actually started helping with the queen pomona's brunch before i was on the board mm -hmm. and for the mount state apple harvest festival board of directors you were actually nominated so someone that was there and saw me helping nominated me to serve on the board and i gladly accepted do you function kind of as a coach um, you know, I don't really know that these girls need coaching, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I would hope it would be more mentor, maybe, um, you know, just to help them along along their way, I guess, maybe coaching. But these young ladies are pretty phenomenal in what they do. Um, you know, these girls come to us with over 4.0 GPAs, um, very active in their communities already, very active in their churches. So when they come to us, maybe aside from coaching them on the Apple industry, if they don't have as much knowledge there, they really kind of do this themselves. 
themselves. I think Courtney's being a little humble. I've served with her on the, on the board uh, for, for years, <laughs> and the amount of work she puts in with the whole court, um, even to, to the dresses and the way they the, – there's a lot more – behind the scenes then then she's letting up and she works really hard with these young ladies so i gotta give her credit there thanks mike olivia if you mess up does courtney ever say take a lap come back and do it better <laughs> no never we'll not tolerate these mistakes <laughs> no never i'm i'm so lucky to have you to be like she said a mentor and like a super imp super important person in my life and someone who has really helped me throughout this reign um from setting up different appearances to just being there um I'm just so lucky to have you by my side. That's nice. So, Olivia, would, did you get a choice in what you get to wear when you get you're coronated or when you're going in the uh, parade? Or is all that stuff kind of a, a, a joint effort? How does that work? <laughs> I love this question. So, the gown, it's always tradition to keep the queen's gown top secret. Mm -hmm. So, I got to oh. see my gown for the first time the summer before I was crowned, whenever I had my um, official photo shoot at butler's farm yeah and i just remember the first time i saw it it was just like you got the flutters in your heart and it was just so exciting and then we have fittings throughout the year to make sure that everything's perfect for the day of and then day of is when everybody sees it and it's just you get to display it for the first time and it's just so exciting so for the gown i had no idea what it looked like until i saw it for that first time and courtney picked it out and she picks out the maids dresses nobody saw the maids dresses it all happens at coronation everybody sees everything wow. for the first time mm -hmm. so how do you make that choice then courtney do you do you base it on the person or the, the person that's coming or do, have you already decided years down the road what you're doing so it's a little bit of both i'm okay. going to say um so my husband will tell you i sit on the computer for a really long time searching the website um, we actually use deja vu out of uh, mount airy and they um we they have a huge website selection for us to go through and we actually choose a quinceanera gown and those gowns provide us with kind of the glamour that we're looking for if you've ever been to the coronation it's a lot of pomp and circumstance so we're looking for a really nice beautiful full gown for our queen um and i I usually have about two gowns and then once the queen is selected I usually select from that one or two um, this is definitely the decision um, that that's that fits them and actually for Olivia I had two gowns that were chosen the year that we selected Olivia and um, between the two the gold one that she wore it was the perfect fit yeah, it was stunning yeah so what happens the to the gown afterwards they keep the gown okay. um so some of our queens so it used to be a, a bridal gown years and years ago so actually um, our mistress of ceremonies who you will meet tomorrow night is jennifer custer howe 20 years ago um, she served as queen pomona she wore her gown from her coronation to her wedding and then had it preserved is that aaron is that aaron's wife it is okay. yes yeah, yeah. she's so. spectacular um another example of just the pure beauty and grace that these young women i mean present jennifer's wonderful um so but she word in her wedding and so there's a long-standing tradition a lot of these girls hold on to these gowns for years and we've been um, showing them at the Ruby and Rhinestone event too we've been displaying them so some of the Queens have allowed us to bring those back to life and cool. and display wow. them mm -hmm. and then yeah. during the parade they, they wear something over the top of their gate it's like they a, do the, the cape <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. okay. the cape yes so that kind of makes it consistent every year when, mm -hmm. when, when you when we see the the queen in a parade is yes that correct? yeah that's the only thing that's really going to be consistent okay. is that that cape is the same one every year suzanne horner actually made that yeah. stunning velvet cape that you see um and we place that on the queen the night of her coronation okay. so once the crown and sash are placed she stands and she is the that cape is is draped over her okay she does her walk and then it is placed on her again for the parade mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with with the the crown is it different every year based so, on the person um so no yes okay. and no <laughs> is going to be my answer to that um you know i i flirted last year with potentially changing the crown every year so olivia um is very special and that she <laughs> is going to have a, a different crown we will go back to our original crown um so and, and i say original years ago it was a much smaller round crown that just sat right on 
the top of the queen's head, similar to Miss West Virginia's mm -hmm. crown. Um, and then it changed to the very large one that you see that was going to be the full crown that goes all the way around the head. Um, and then I kind of toyed back and forth with, well, a lot of different festivals change their crown every year. So maybe that's something that we'll do. And I picked out the stunning one that Olivia has on <laughs> now. Um, and then as I started toying with it and the other one started popping up again, I'm like, I think I'm going to go back to the original. So <laughs> Brittany will be crowned um, with the one that we've used in several years past. So Olivia kind of is special in that she has um, got her in. But Olivia made history. I don't know if you all already talked about that, but her her and her mom are the only mother-daughter duo. That's right. I forgot about yes. that last year. Yeah. That was a very big news yeah. item. Yes. So that's yes. pretty cool. What is yeah. that like with your mom? You guys compare notes here or what? <laughs> I guess you can say that. Yeah. It's a really great experience to share with my mom and just like talk about the things that have changed from she was Queen Pomona the 12th. I was the 43rd. So it's a big time. 31 difference. year swing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really great opportunity to be able to share this experience mm -hmm. with her. I guess the apple yeah. doesn't fall far. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like that. Harvey. I like that. He's been so, toying with that all that whole morning. <laughs> you, you must have grown up in the Apple Harvest Festival from a, a wee pup, basically. Right? I did. So I was actually the crown bearer for um, Queen Pomona, Kira Heck, mm -hmm. whenever I was, mm, I want to say like, nine eight or nine mm -hmm. so that's kind of how i started in the apple harvest festival and then i was miss west virginia's outstanding teen in 2021 so then i had the opportunity to attend the festival as a special guest and i was there for all the behind the scenes and all the activities and i think that's when i really fell in love with it because i got the opportunity to see what really happens and then i decided that i wanted to interview and then I was just lucky enough to get chosen, and now my mom and I get to share that special experience. Tell me about the relationship and the lineage of the queens on down the year and the sorority that is Queen Pomona over the years. It's such an encouraging and, I want to say, loving program. Um, last year, Morgan Fleming was Queen Pomona, and she really helped me, like guided me through what to wear like on the fairgrounds whenever we get to wear just sweater dresses or things like that and she gave me gifts and showered me with so much love and now I get to do the same for Brittany and I know she's super excited and I'm there's not a better person that I think I could pass this down to she's truly amazing and I'm so excited that she gets to have this opportunity she was definitely a fun interview when we had her in here we had a we definitely had a blast with her she's uh she, she was a uh, very um vivacious lively mm -hmm. you know energetic person it was yeah. great uh, I want to ask you, in regards to uh, your education at WVU, what are you studying? Matt's hoping you're saying law at some point. I hope point so, yeah. Law. <laughs> so I'm actually studying psychology on the <laughs> on the pre-med track. So I want to go to medical school and become a psychiatrist. Oh, very nice. I do want to work with the law enforcement, though, because I want to specialize in criminal psychiatry. So oh, you should warn her. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I think That's between funny. her grandmother and her mom, they probably have warned her plenty. Probably. <laughs> um, well, you you come over and shadow at our office anytime you want. Thank you. I appreciate in. that. As long as you bring your grandmother with you. Okay. <laughs> She's coming to the gala this she evening. She is coming yeah. tonight, yes. Yeah, tell us mm -hmm. about tonight. So tonight is the Royal Gala at the racetrack in Charlestown. And like I said earlier, that's where I will give my mm -hmm. farewell speech and kind of pass it down to Brittany. What time does it begin? 530. 530 socials? Yes, social. start. Mm -hmm. Can anybody attend, or do you have to have tickets in advance? So it is or what? now a sold out event. Sorry, Olivia. Oh. <laughs> it is officially a sold out event. We stopped. When did we stop ticket sales on that, Mike? It was mm, Thursday last yeah, week, Thursday. and we had some trickling. And finally, we had it was officially sold out yesterday at 11 a.m. I think we sold the last ticket. We accepted the last one. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. hey, so uh, this is uh, Apple Harvest Festival number what? This is the 44th. 44th. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I started working here in 1990. Not not here, but in, in Eastern Panhandle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, th I think this is the most unique thing to the Eastern Panhandle that there is. Yeah. I would uh, th this is probably the youth fair. Mm -hmm. Right? If you're going to think about two things that you yeah, identify those, with Eastern Panhandle. I would say Panhandle. those are the two two events yeah. that we right? call our own and nobody else mm -hmm. can take that from us. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Agree. Courtney, I want to uh, ask you first. Tell, tell me about the pride in identifying with that and making sure this is such a great event every year because this is 
what just reflects on the community. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I show great pride um, in it, and the fact that this, especially for the board of directors, is a year long thing. Um, we pour so much time. There are so many volunteer hours that go into this, and just. Uh, my best example is last year. Now, granted, I was pregnant. I knew I had some hormones, but standing in the back of Airborne when the coronation finally came together and Olivia got up on stage and, and um, Kentley and Hart placed their crown on her head, I had tears streaming down my face. Um, and I think it's just because this is like, a, it's almost like a wedding every year. Yeah. You're putting on a wedding for the entire community to attend, right? And, th- and that's all of the events of the rehearsal dinner, you know, this kind of the gala and, and we lead up to the coronation and then we have the wedding with the parade and all of the different events that we have. And so you want it to go off without a flaw. And so to see all of that come together and it goes just as fast as a wedding, mind you, it really does, especially I think for the board of directors, it goes really fast. It's really humbling and it just feels so good to see the community out and be together during Apple Harvest Weekend. Similar to the youth fair, it feels really, really good to see the community just come together and be so supportive of something that everyone's worked so hard on. And that coronation is open to the public too. It is, so please please come out. Mm -hmm. It it is a lot of pomp and circumstance, like you said, Mm -hmm. but it really is a celebration. And then the rest of the weekend is the party and and (laughs) what's going on down the youth fair and the rodeo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've got so much stuff going on. So um, the parade, I mean, the parade Mm -hmm. is probably the most attended thing in in Mm -hmm. Berkeley County. So, yeah. And it looks like we're gonna have some really pretty weather um, Mm -hmm. for that parade, which is awesome. Um, But I do, I just encourage the community to get out and see these events that are very unique to our area, um, to the Eastern Panhandle. And it involves so much more. I mean, um, you know, we've got a Jefferson County Queen this year, which is really wonderful. It pulls some of the Jefferson County in because I think sometimes people also confuse it with it's Berkeley County. Right. Um, And that's absolutely not the case. So um, even when you look at our court, it can be Hampshire County, um, it can be Berkeley County, it can be more Morgan County, it can be Jefferson County. And so, um, you know, we, we see individuals from kind of all over. And I hope that, if anything, that every year the apple harvest reaches more and more people. Okay, so uh, we have many new people that move into the area every yeah. day, yes. in, in fact. And there's mm-hmm. new listeners to this program every day as well. So mm-hmm. uh, for those who aren't familiar with the story of Queen Pomona, who mm-hmm. can tell the story best? the history of Queen Pomona. I can tell it, but I really think that Olivia should tell because they actually answer um, these questions during their interview Mm -hmm. and what Queen Pomona stands for. So I'm going to allow Olivia to (laughs) share that. So Queen Pomona was a Greek goddess and she was the the goddess of the gardens and the apple trees and she was a protector. And so as Queen Pomona, it is kind of our role to um, spread knowledge about the apple industry in the Eastern Panhandle and the history of agriculture. And... um, just be there during the festival and be a light and be able to connect with community members. Have you, in your year of presiding, produced many apples? <laughs> has it been a bountiful year? <laughs> it has been a bountiful year, not necessarily in apples, but in different opportunities and different experiences that I've had. What are you gonna miss the most about this as your year comes to a close? Oh goodness, that's a hard question. Honestly, everything. <laughs> like right. having the opportunity to be Queen Pomona is one in a million, and it's the chance of a lifetime. And I love being able to connect with community members. As Courtney said, this is such a big event for the app, for the Eastern Panhandle. And so when people come out and they're coming out to these events, they're always so excited to see the Queen and meet the Queen. And so being in that Queen role was truly incredible. But it doesn't stop after the festival. Throughout the whole year, I attended different fundraisers and was in different classrooms reading to children. So that is definitely a big part for me is connecting with the community. And, and for those of you wondering, uh, Olivia added another set to her skills during the year. She learned how to wear headsets and a crown. <laughs> I know. I see her over there like, oh, I know. it's like <laughs> slipping. <laughs> Not everybody has to do that. I, for instance, I had to do it with a, what, I had like a, what, like a sub head on one day, so, sub sandwich <laughs> hat on. Yeah. It was for one of the charities that was out there. I think John Gilstrap said, if you wear this, there was like a giant sandwich, like a 12 inch sub on your head. <laughs> For I think it was for Meals on Wheels. If you do that for the rest of the show, I'll pledge so many dollars to Meals on Wheels. So I tried to wear headsets with one of those giant sub <laughs> hats on one day. So I can identify a little bit, but your crown is a lot more dignified than my sub hat was. <laughs> so there's 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 that. So uh, well, it was, it was great to have you on the program here today. You get Thank to you. keep the crown, but the sash goes to the next person. Yes, right. Uh, that sash retires actually. Oh, the sash is off the. 
so we have a new sash this year. Um, so th- these, so what does that an, retire to? Um, it's just to the collection. Oh. So um, I'm glad you, know, you didn't say Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it's not retiring to Florida. Um, so it will just go. We have a collection. Um, past queens have donated beautiful oak boxes, um, and maybe eventually one will be donated for this sash that is now going to retire. And that's just really because it's it's had its beautiful use, um, and so it's it's got its years in. And um, you know we we obviously don't want it to um, fall apart mm-hmm. on us, and so it's just time to retire it. And there will be a brand new sash tomorrow. Night. Is um, there significance that they're not able to keep it? Um, so, no, not really. I mean, it's just always been something that each queen has gone down and gotten the sash. We do not put a year on our sash. So you'll notice that, uh, and, and it's probably difficult to see, but this sash, it does not have a year. So we use the same sash every single year for each queen. Um, the only thing they get to keep is their crown. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and. Uh, how long does the sash last? I mean, does, does, will next year's sash go to the next queen, or do they all get put in a closet somewhere? Nope. So I started helping with Rhonda Golden. So it's been f- five, six, six or seven years ago. I started helping with Rhonda, and we had this sash. I want to say that this one's probably at least. Gosh, I'm gonna, I was on the court in 2007, and it this was that queen's sash. Oh, okay. I mean, that's we're so talking. Yes, like we it. very well preserve these every year. They, um, so each queen takes so very good care of them. So it's not just thrown in a in a closet mm-hmm. somewhere. No, 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 no. Yeah, like no, my wife's take, wedding dress. Oh gosh. <laughs> Um, Sitting no, in the attic. Yeah. I think ours is under the steps in the basement. Right. <laughs> um, yes, no, they're they're well taken care of, but eventually, I mean, they they age. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's been a long time. I, this one, if I had to guess, this one's probably close to twenty years oh, old. That's a lot of history mm-hmm. there. Now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, a few years ago, they had an event where they tried to bring all the uh, surviving queens together for mm-hmm. uh, like a type of reunion. Did they still do that, or was that like a unique thing for that so year? So that would have been the fiftieth year, and um, I think the goal would be that we continue to do that at each kind of you know milestone that we hit uh, but as of now that's not something that we do each year um, we do invite our past queen pomona's to come of course to our coronation to our events and we would love to see them there um, but as far as an official invite where we bring them up on stage um, and then put them in the parade so we did do that for the 50th anniversary they actually each had cars we brought them down yeah. um, they also With had 40. sashes so was it the i'm sorry i was saying 50 yeah. so 50 will be the next one that was it was the 40th year year. yes i'm so sorry so for the 40th year we did that and they each had sashes that had their um, number on them Mm -hmm. so um i think the rubies and rhinestone uh event is kind of where you have the dresses Mm -hmm. that has really turned out to be a place where you could showcase your dresses yeah yeah it has and we have some past queens that come to that Mm -hmm. as well yeah and so it's really it's really sweet to see them get these gowns out and bring them and put them back on display again do we know or have an active uh, count of how many queens are still in the area Oh, goodness. A lot have moved out of the area. That is something that, I'll I'll be honest, I really need to work on. Um, After having taken this role is to really kind of pinpoint Mm -hmm. who do we still have living, first of all, and who's still in the area and really track down each and every single one of these queens um, so that we can get more of a turnout of our past queens to each festival. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, it's great to have you both in studio. Thank you for having us. Great job representing Queen Pomona for Thank the year. You. Your reign was a dominant one. <laughs> Thank you. You'll be known as a benevolent queen. <laughs> <laughs> kind to every apple you've seen. <laughs> Thank you. She's wonderful. She's unstoppable. Absolutely. <laughs> and your next queen will be just amazing as well. Yeah. Did yeah. you see her throw that pitch last night? I did not. Where, oh. where did she throw the pitch? So she actually threw the ceremonial first um, opening pitch last night at the final fall classic game. Um, so And she threw a strike. Well, yeah. you know, her DNA for baseball is pretty good. Uh-huh. You know? yeah, I was going to yeah. say, she, she's yeah. probably not the first pitch she's no, thrown. No, no, no. She sent me a short little clip of her throwing that. Yeah. I was unable to attend, and she did a great job. So. Those, those uh, The uncle and the dad were pretty good baseball players at Jefferson High School. So <laughs> there you go. I'm sure she's tossed it's the ball in the blood. Times. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, have a great time tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Olivia Travis, Courtney Funk at uh, 9 o'clock. This is Talk Radio WNR Martinsburg.